The following is a special presentation of ABC Sports. For IndyCar points leader Jimmy Vassar, those objects are the three drivers chasing him in the championship. Christian Fittipaldi, fourth in points. Consistent, always scores on road courses. Jill DeFerrin, third in points. The best on a road course this year. Alenzer Jr., second in points. 25 of his 31 wins have been on a road course. With four road races left and a one-point championship lead, Vassar knows. Sports Car Course in Lexington, Ohio. The Indy cars have just roared into life, and we're ready for the Miller 200 right in the middle of an incredibly tight points fight right now for the championship. Look at those points. Now, with Jimmy Vassar only a point ahead, and all of those on that page, all competent road racers, we virtually have a blank page to run the four races to the end of the season. So this is a pivotal race. Let's go to Jack Aroot. Well, this is the separation between Team Ganassi's two pits. On my left, you will find the pit for Alex Zanardi. On my right, for, at, for Jimmy Vassar. But here's the problem. That one point that Zanardi took, well, it could be the difference in that chase for the championship. Vassar was on the pole before he gained a point. He didn't get it this time. Some people say by the time we get to Laguna Seca, the possibility exists. That points difference could make the difference in the championship. This team has done incredibly well. They've started on the front row before. We'll have to see if one can come home the victor. Gary? Jack, let's check in now on the Al Unser situation. Here's a man who's won this race the last two years. Two years ago, he won it from the pole. Last year, he won it from eighth starting position. Today, he's all the way back in 15th position, so he's got a major task in front of him. He hasn't won this year, nor has the Penske team. They desperately want to win. They desperately want a championship. But if they're going to do it today, they may have to tactically do it through their pit stops. That'll be interesting to watch. Keep in mind, Tom Sneva, 1978, nearly 20 20 years ago, the last man to win one of these championships without winning a race event. Paul? Well, so with that key fight in the championship here today, stretching to the end of the season, what do they have to do, Danny? Well, really what everybody in that hunt has to do is they have to score the maximum amount of points that they can. They cannot falter. They don't need any accidents, anything. They have to get the most points because if they don't, they can possibly drop back three, four, even five positions in the championship. For us, that means great racing. Now, there are a couple of new faces here. We call them rookies, but they're champions from their own series. First of all, Max Pappas is now in the RCR Wells car, number 25. And Jan Magnuson, he comes over from Formula One test driver where he drives for McLaren, Marlboro, Penske, if you like, over there with Mercedes power and in the touring cars. It's a natural for him to be in that seat. They're rolling on the parade lap right now. Let's go back to the Michigan 500 and think about Emerson Fittipaldi. He had an accident, of course, right on the very first lap, got against the wall hard. They operated on him this week. He'll recover fine. But the real question now is what about his future and retirement? I think this, most looks like I'm not going to race again. I will not race again. I'm not 100% sure because I need some more reflection, but. I got a very strong message from the Lord. We've got a couple of different answers since then from Emerson, including that it might not have been an absolute order. What do you think he'll do? Well, I tell you, having been in his position where I've had a serious accident, your initial reaction is, you know, I don't want to go back to that. Emerson's won so much over his career. But as you start thinking about it, then you say, you know, I don't really want to go out of racing on that note. I'd really like to have another championship run. So he's got a little tough decision in front of him. And don't forget, Emerson sitting down in Miami. He's watching this show right now. We'll talk to him a little later. Now, let's take a look at the starting grid. The pole sitter is Alex Zanardi, his third pole of the year, and it comes with a new track record. Alongside his teammate, Jimmy Vassar, the points leader, makes his sixth front row start of the year. In the second row, Brian Herta, second place at Michigan, equaled his best career finish. And Michael Andretti, a back-to-back -back winner here in 1990 and 91. In row three, Christian Fittipaldi and Scott Pruitt. The fourth row, Greg Moore and Adrian Fernandez. 
In the fifth row, Bobby Rahal, a two-time winner here, 85 and 86. Andre Ribeiro is outside. His second win of the year came two weeks ago at Michigan. In row six, Raul Boisel, a seventh at Michigan, equaled his best finish of the year. And Mauricio Guzelman, his first career start was here in 93. In row seven, Mark Blundell and Jill DeFerrin, one of only four drivers in this year's race to have led here. In row eight, Alan Tur Jr., who won the last two races here, and Parker Johnstone. The ninth row, Robbie Gordon and Jan Magnuson making his first career start, substituting for Paul Tracy. Row 10, Max Pappas, also his first career start in an IndyCar. Stefan Johansson is outside. In the 11th row, Roberto Moreno and Juan Fangio. The 12th row, Davy Jones and P.J. Jones. And row 13, Hiro Mashushta and Eliseo Salazar. And as we look over the top of Michael Andretti, there are the points for the rookies. So not only is there a battle for the championship, but look at the one point difference between Alex Zanardi and Greg Moore in the rookies points. And that's because Zanardi was able to earn a point for getting on the pole here. And then here at the Mid-Ohio Sports Car Course, 2.25 miles, 13 turns, 83 laps, 185.8 miles, that's the distance. Now, one of the interesting things about this track too is that they will start over on what is really the back side of the race course. That's because the pit straight's a little too short to safely do it. And so they start in one place, they finish in another. There are your passing zones and your trouble zones. As we're ready now to roll to the start at the Mid-Ohio 200, the Miller 200 here in Mid-Ohio. There is the starting area, you saw it there. This is turn one. They'll move into formation after they get through this corner and then we'll be ready to go. The two uh, Target Ganassi cars on the front row. Well, and everybody's jockeying right now. They're trying to warm up their tires. They got to get them a lot of heat on them because they go into the S's, a lot of tight corners right there. The reason they start on the back straightaway is because that front straightaway is so short. They don't want they want to give everybody plenty of room to sort themselves out and have a good clean start. Boy there's a great view as now downhill green flag should lie just ahead. Zanardi surges way ahead. And they go green. So Zanardi pulls way, way ahead right at the start. And now into the first corner puff of brake smoke to Farron gets in trouble goes off course. And that's a very dangerous section. Fortunately, he wasn't up to top speed, but getting that car out of there is going to be very diff difficult for Jill DeFerrin. And remember, he's one of the key people in that points fight. Well, that really cost him right there. Like I said in the beginning of the show, you've got to get maximum amount of points. You can't have any problems go. He's, he's not going to do a very good job in here. That sand's supposed to get in there, and he'll lose too much ground. If he doesn't dig in, uh, he might get out of there. Here's what happened. Coming down into the green, look way over to the right there. At the back of your screen, that black. See, he locks up. He just locks up, and he taps the car in front of him. It looks like it was one of the Pac West cars. Crucialman. And he just he just locked it up. He just got in there too deep. And the uh, course marshals are reporting that uh, Mark Blundell has a flat tire. We've gone to full course caution right here on the start. That's going to help Jill DeFerrin. They'll be able to get him out of the sand trap and hopefully he will be back into the race. Well, they try to get with DeFerrin in the cockpit. Never seen that before. They're trying to get him out to the edge of the course. Well, and Mauricio Guzman, by the way, was the one with flatted tires. The, uh, they are under full course caution, and it looks like they're doing a little more work than just that. Well, I think he got hit pretty hard there by, by uh, Jill DeFerrin. See, we're in the screen. They're not in it yet. Here comes Mauricio. You'll see him come in there with the red. Boom! He just rams him right in the back hard. That probably cut his tire, but it might have done some suspension damage. That's why he's still in the pit if it was just a tire. And the reason they're doing taking deference, see, they're going to try to get him off there, pull him. He'll jump start the engine. See, his nose is all black down there. That's where I think he hit Maurizio. And then what will happen is they'll give him a toe start. He'll go in and get new tires and try to get back out. But i got to tell you, Paul, unless everybody else has a problem, his race in terms of the 
points today are over because he'll be three, four laps behind by the time he gets out. Yeah, it looks that way. Let's go to Gary Gerald. Well, we're just standing by with the crew down here, and they've gone over the wall, and they've got fresh Goodyear's out there, and they're hoping that they will see their car very shortly. He can get in here, and they're anxious. Obviously, great disappointment because everybody's so pumped, so primed. They know the critical importance of this race, and now they've been deflated with this incident right after the green flag. So a very, very tough break for Jill DeFerrin. We'll just wait with the crew and see what happens. Paul? Well, the crew sits there. They wait. They have no idea what might be occurring on that race car, what damage there might be. And Guzman continues to sit in the pits as well. Jack? Well, let's update you on Mauricio Guzman. They changed the tire. Now they want to check through with the luxury of this full course yellow. All of the suspension pieces make sure that they don't miss something. Let's update you on a couple of issues. Number one, Jimmy Vassar, before the start of the race, was on the radio complaining about his teammate. He said Alex Zanardi wasn't giving him the proper room. He said he's going to try and jump me on the start. Nobody answered him. There's also been a major change in Alex Zanardi's pit crew today. You see, earlier today, Rick Davis, who changes the inside rear tire, they think he may have suffered a broken foot while he was pushing a big toolbox out here to the pits. So the team has had to scramble. They've added Simon Hodgson to the inside front tire changing position, moved Rob Hill. Remember Rob? He was the guy that came down with Lyme disease. He's moved to the inside rear replacing Davis, and Philby will stay right where he's been. And green flag comes out as Sonardi leads him down. Look at Ray Hall and Ribeiro as they both jumped underneath a Greg Moore. Hey, Greg Moore's got some kind of a problem. Everybody went by him. He was getting passed. He was that bright blue and white car that you saw on the outside of your screen. He was getting smoked. Michael Andretti chases Brian Herta back to the front. The four cars, the pole sitter, Alex Sonardi. There is Moore, and he's in trouble. Remember that rookie points battle we were telling you about. One point separates Sonardi and Moore. Another story. Farron. The Farron is in problems in terms of trying to catch up. Now more some sort of mechanical problem that's going to affect that fight. Now Jimmy Vassar was complaining about his teammate not giving him room. I think his teammates pulling away from him at a pretty steady uh, move right there. And it looked there like Jimmy was very loose coming over the top of that one hill. Paul, what happens here a lot of times, too, if you don't get your tires up to temperature on those yellows when you're moving them around, this first laps around here, he might be conservative on them, trying to hold those tires together for as long as he can, so he's got them at the end of the run. Brian Herta, Michael Andretti in pursuit, the Farron coming out of the pits, so they've got him back underway, but he's well back. That just brake smoke ahead as somebody jammed down on the brakes hard. This is the keyhole. Well, that's Michael Andretti. He's chasing Brian Herta. And of course, he's got Scott Pruitt in your screen right there, right behind him. Pruitt, then Christian Fittipaldi. On board, Christian Fittipaldi now. Now, Paul, what you'll really see here is watch his hands and how physical this track is. And see, they've got no brake. He turned right, now he's left. He's up over the sharp hill. Gets a little light there. Down out here, he's got a brake. The car wants to go left. Up over that hill again. Off there, now he comes up through this corner here. Now he's got a sharp left-hander. A short shirt, just a squirt on the throttle. Brake hard, this is a tricky corner, the carousel. Around this, very important to come off here with the power, left-hander. See how much his hands are moving? This is going to, he's going to be doing that all day long. Now a fast left-hander through here. This is quick. This is in fourth gear, almost flat out. And up to what we know is the keyhole. Now, if you look in the upper left-hand corner, in the past we have run positioning throughout the field and the laps to go down across the bottom of the screen. Here's something else we're going to try. It might be a little more convenient if it's up in this section, especially on a road race. Huh? Let's see how this works. Seems to be working very well thus far. Gary Gerald, Greg Moore, what's the problem? Apparently lost boost, Paul, for a moment, uh, maybe more than a moment. Dropped all the way back to the end of the single file procession. Now they're checking the computers and the telemetry, and it looks like the boost is coming back. Meanwhile, they've got all the spare electronic parts poised just behind pit wall in case they have to bring him in and make changes. But right now, it looks like he's back up to power. But, boy, what frustration. 
Greg Moore right in the middle of that rookie fight. Kind of surprised me that he has not yet won a race. I really thought he was going to score in his first uh, season. But still four races to go. He's a road racing expert. Maybe it happens here. Andre Ribeiro. Honda Power, there he is, the Ducati car, now on board the Miller car. Paul and Inter Ribeiro, and I meant Fernandez. Right. Paul, interesting here, though, that you bring up that he could win his first race. Of course, he's dropped back off that. But no driver has ever won his first race at this race. And we're riding with the guy who probably has the most experience. That's Bobby Rahal, currently eighth. And Rahal, this is his home track. He lives not all that far from here in a Columbus suburb as he comes in to challenge Fernandez. You know, it's interesting. We just saw him down there at the end of the straight following Fernandez in that Honda powered car. Bobby being Mercedes. Mercedes found that here at this place at the end of the straightaway, they had the fastest trap speeds of any of the cars out there, the Mercedes powered cars. So I think we're going to see those guys a lot closer to the Hondas than we've seen in some of the races previously. Now the report from the pits is that Mauricio Guzman is out with suspension problems, so he's the first retirement of the day. Al Unser Jr., look at this, starts 15th, up in 9th. So Junior very much aware of the championship the two time defending champion at this track while uh, a rookie may never have won it here Al Hunter Junior certainly knows his way around the winner the past two years. So seven laps are now complete the pole sitter Alex Zanardi jumped out to a good start on both the green and then on the restart his teammate the points leader Jimmy Vassar is following. Back at the Miller 200, the beautiful Mid Ohio sports car course, Lexington, Ohio. The battle is for third place. Michael Andretti, the black Kmart car there, is chasing that yellow, black, and white shell car of Brian Herta. He's been right on the top of Herta a couple of times, and what's developed into a pretty good fight, but has also brought Scott Pruitt and Christian Fittipaldi down where they're very close to getting into this battle as well. Let's go to Jack Aroot. Paul, you're looking at the nose piece from Jill DeFerrin's car. Now, where did it end up? It ended up in the tire that was deflated of this man, Mauricio Guzman. He didn't hit you, he speared you. Oh, it was incredible. I made a good start. I saw nobody behind. I went around the outside. I was close to passing Ribeiro. Next thing, this bang on my back, I think he missed his breaking point by 200 yards or something. Well, he missed his breaking point, and we told you they were going to check around Gary Gerald. What they found were the wishbones were bent and broken as well. So he's out of the race. Gary? And Jack, here's the other part. This is what's left of Gilles DeFerrin's nose. And you can see how all of this carbon fiber, Kevlar type of stuff that's so strong, has just been twisted and chewed away. That's what happens when you rear end or make contact with somebody at this great speed with all that energy. I think the point there, too, is that that's not fiberglass. Carbon fiber construction is very, very strong. To do that kind of damage, you're talking some severe energy. Well, as we saw in that shot, I mean, he just, I think Big Mo's right. Uh, Gilles just loused up his braking. I don't think it was too hard, 200 yards, but he loused it up by a lot and just rammed him right in the back. Blundell has been reported with an off and on, split off the course, got right back on at turn two. Zanardi, Vassar, Herta, Andretti. There's the top four. And we are watching as Michael continues to try and work on Brian Herta. That's the pit straight. That's where the finish line is. Under this bridge, nice sweeping fast turn. Yeah, that's a really fun corner. That's the fastest corner on the track. You take that in fourth gear, it's almost flat out. But what we're seeing here really is that the two Chip Ganassi cars are gone. They've, they've checked out. They've gone down. See, they're down the straightaway. We get a visual right there. Now here comes third place. That's quite a distance with this much with only having gone what 11 laps but see that battle in there if you like look at this Bobby Ray all taking a look to get around Adrian Fernandez looks to the outside of Fernandez not quite enough room there but very definitely Bobby's on the prowl this one has closed in to be a little tighter battle than that one we were watching up front look at Ray Hall right there and look who is right behind him who's benefiting from this Allen Jr. Jill DeFerrin but I think he's about three or four laps down. So DeFerrin in the middle there, Ribeiro right behind him, and 
got a problem with P.J. Jones. A fire at the back of that Toyota powered car. So the Castrol car pulls to the side. There is the IndyCar safety team right there. There's a, there's a smart guy. He knew exactly where the fire station was, if you like. His car is on fire. He knew it. He could feel it. That's why he locked up the brakes. But he pulled in right where the fire truck was. That's one of the things that they tell you back in driver school, and it's a rule that never changes, is it? Well, they, they tell you, and you know where these guys were. Saw how he bailed out. He could feel that heat. So P.J. Jones out of the race. Lon Bromley is there, uh, the fellow with his back to us right now. He is the uh, director of the safety teams, does a terrific job. Some of the best in the world at getting down on top of a car and doing what is necessary to uh, keep that driver safe despite what may have happened. And by the way, for P.J., it's only uh, his third DNF of the year on a team that is uh, with Dan Gurney working developmentally on that engine. You can bet when they get to the winter season, there's going to be a lot of work done, a lot of drawing. They're going to come back next year very powerful. Let's go to the pits and Gary. Well, we're just checking in on the progress of Al Unser Jr. We had speculated that perhaps they might incorporate some unusual pit strategy, meaning that they might take an early pit stop and make it a three-stop race, a short fill, which is a quicker stop, and then get back out so that he might cycle into the lead factors. But because Junior has been so good in the early laps and had vaulted from 15th up to 9th, it looks like now they're going to plan on a two-stop race. They think they're within sight of the leaders and can run with them. Let's go to Jack. Well, as we take a look, as we take a look at the onboard telemetry for Scott Pruitt is currently posted in fifth place. It's not changing, folks. Why? The onboard telemetry's gone away. They're not getting anything back here in the pits. Add to that, they had a real brief scare in the first lap when the dashboard went out, Danny Sullivan. But Scott Pruitt changed a battery, made a change. The dashboard's back up, but they have to work the radio to find out what the car's doing. Well, I gotta tell you, though, once that race starts and as busy as mid-Ohio is, and you want that dashboard, it's not critical around here. They've, because of the practice, as many laps as he's run around here, he knows his shift points. What he's focusing on right now is that car in front of him and the car behind him. He'll just take any warning lights for anything else. What about that decision by Allen's or Junior's crew? You think that, that's gonna play out? Well, I do, but I think what's great about racing, and particularly IndyCar racing, is you got to think on your feet when something happens and with him moving up from 15th to 9th Roger made the decision hey we're in a good spot we're going to go with two if he had still been back in 15th they might have decided on a three stop race the aerial footage for this weekend's Miller 200 is being provided by the Miller Eagle airplane there it is hi guys how you doing thanks for the great shots it's it's his inaugural broadcast test flight Give us some rather unique aerial footage for the fans. So that is the plane up above. Here is Max Pappas. That's the 25 car, and that's way too early. And you know what? Those guys aren't walking around there with any urgency. They got a big problem. Nobody seems to be anxious. He's just sitting in the car hoping they can fix it. That's an unfortunate thing for his first IndyCar race. A lot of long-distance sports car experience. They call him Mad Max. Great guy to talk to and chum around with. Go back up now to the front of the field. That is Jimmy Vassar. You're on board, and we look ahead to try to find his teammate. Well, there he is, Alex Zanardi, and it looks like he's spread it out even more. Paul, one of the things, though, that Jimmy's probably thinking about here is that, that uh, Zanardi's out there in front. He's a little bit quicker. You can't catch him. He's pulled out. He's got to think championship. Sit there, drive the car as comfortably but as hard as you can. Don't lose too much ground for another yellow or something like that or to take advantage of something that goes wrong, but to get away from those other guys and score the maximum points. Well, Gary, Max Pappas started 19th. He was able to move up to 18th and then into the pits. Apparently a clutch problem, Paul. That's what they've been chasing. They've uh, tried to look through some of the linkage that they can get to, and it looks like maybe they've had some success because now the starter is poised under the rear wing, and they may be trying to fire it up again in a moment. We're just hanging on to see. He started to unbuckle, then got uh, decided no. They're making a wing adjustment, and I think they're going to try to fire it up and get him back on course. Oh, no. <laughs> they just had a problem there as he began to spin the starter. The clutch wasn't engaged, and the car lurched forward about six feet. No problem. Everybody got back. Well, there is a reason, of course, that we call them rookies. They are new to the series. It's very hard to learn. There is Jan Magnussen. Look at his run up from 18th to 14th. 
Now he'll move over to Emerson Fittipaldi's car. After this, Paul Tracy will come back into that car, and then we're going to see him over really in the Hogan car for the remainder of the season. Then what? What, what is his background? What is he about? Well, he's been a test driver for the uh, McLaren Formula One team and for Mercedes. He drives touring cars, but he's got a lot of single seat experience. They're very high on him. They think he's very quick. He's done a good job. And who knows? I'm not 100% sure that the uh, Hogan Penske team knows what their plans are for the next year, what's going to happen. But I think this is a good testing ground for him. I think it's very positive. And who knows? He may shine in this car. And uh, they might not take him for next year, but somebody else might decide to pick him up. Yeah, exactly. This is a time when everybody seems to be looking for who their drivers will be in the future. 16 laps complete. Alex Zanardi is the leader. We'll be back after these messages and a word from our ABC stations. Bobby Rahal being chased by Al Unser Jr. Next Sunday at 3 Eastern, 2 Central and Pacific, the Indy Racing League will kick off their 1996-97 season. The Indy 500 winner Buddy Lazier and the drivers of the IRL head to New Hampshire for the True Value 200. That's next Sunday here on ABC Sports. And Bobby Rahal, Al Unser Jr., they are battling. Rahal currently occupies eighth place. Junior very conscious of the points fight certainly wants to get around him and just behind the two of them the yellow Pennzoil car is Jill DeFerrin you see him from time to time remember he's two laps off of the pace here but Danny he's looked fairly desperate in trying to get around these guys well that's true I mean I think he wants to show that he can drive the car he's feeling a little bad about the mistake that he made or real bad about it but the problem is these guys in front particularly Allen or junior are battling for a championship. And now Junior is going to get a little bit more anxious right now because Bobby Ray Hall is losing a little bit of touch to Adrian Fernandez who's just at the top of your screen there in that red and green car. He doesn't want to lose too much you know too much ground to him because he wants to pick up those spots especially with Jimmy Vassar running in second. Looking down on the long straight from the Honda Helicam. Down there is the start line the finish line of course over on the pit straight and Bobby Ray Hall continues to have Al Unser Jr. right there. DeFerrin is still a bit closed in. Jack Aroot, are we getting anywhere close to stops? Yes, we are, Paul. Tom Anderson radio to the current point leader, Jimmy Vassar, who runs in second. Let's come in on lap 30. That's what they're planning to do. But Alex Zanardi is being cautioned right now to remember about overtaking traffic. Let's not forget, out at Michigan in the Michigan 500, the wide line in the push condition that puts Zanardi in the wall while leading Gary Gerald couple of updates here, Jack, as we look ahead of the first stop. I think some of the Goodyear teams, which include Christian Fittipaldi, Michael Andretti, Brian Herta, Bobby Rahal down at our end, qualified on option tires, a softer, stickier compound. You have to start the race and what you qualify. Now, when they get to the first pit stop, many of those tires are going to go to the primary version, which is a little harder compound. So a tire change for many of these teams. And a quick follow-up, Paul, on uh, Pappas. He thought it was a clutch problem. Actually, it was the dead pedal, a foot rest, if you will, down in the box that apparently broke. So they refueled him and sent him back on his way. And Pappas is out. He is three laps behind the race along uh, with DeFerrin. Actually, Pappas now flashes as two behind and then DeFerrin three behind, watching for the leaders as they make that move through 13. And you can see already Davy Jones is being caught by Zanardi. And now we look back through a couple of other cars, Salazar, Mashushta, and then the second place, Jimmy Vassar. The interval was at about 3.9 seconds. Now expanded out as they get into traffic to 4.3. Well, something you have to be very careful about in mid-Ohio is traffic because there's really only one good passing spot at the end of the straightaway that Jimmy Vassar is just coming on to. But then you get frustrated in those tight corners because there's some openings. But if you take them, you're in trouble. For about five years when I was racing, the race was lost by just moves like that right there where the guy would chop him and he'd knock the leader out of the race. Uh, Jimmy Vassar trying to make his way around LSAO Salazar, but doing it very carefully. Report from the racetrack now regarding Robbie Gordon. As he came past the pits a few moments ago, they said the engine was running rough. Here's a way to find out. Paul, I don't 
hear it that bad. I don't hear it as clean as you'd like it. But it's hard to say from a driver's point of view. Don't forget if it's not super crisp, you can just feel it going off a little bit. And that could be what he's talking about if, if he's talking about it. But if the observers are listening, it just could be the way that the engine's picking up. We do have his radio open. And Allenser Jr. hits the pits. So Allenser Jr. In, and this looks like it would be plenty early for Little Al, especially if they were planning that strategy, or is it? Well, it could be that he made that. Uh, he couldn't get by uh, Bobby Rahal, and he felt that he was quicker. So maybe Roger decided, let's stop out a step with everybody else. But maybe it's going to be a three-stop race now. They've gone back to three-stop race, possibly. And Magnuson comes in right behind little Al Jackaroo. Well, Danny, consider this fact, too. One thing that Roger Penske knows very well uh, down here is how important track position, how difficult it is to pass. We've already had one full course yellow looking and examining a three-stop race, not out of the realm of possibility, especially with the leaders pulling away the way they are. If you're in the back, you need to come in early just for track position. Max Pappas, the 25 MCI car there. Now they're reporting that he is running very rough as well. He certainly was off song as he came through uh, the final corner there, the carousel or the keyhole corner. Here come the leaders past. And now Christian Fittipaldi makes his stop. Before we get too far away from Robbie Gordon, he did start 17th and is now running in 12th. Paul, let me tell you something, too, about these pits. You notice that they look like he was going uphill. They are going uphill, so you really got to be careful when you leave. You got to give a little bit more RPM to get that thing moving up the hill because it's just that little bit steeper than the normal pit. Stefan Johansson and Roberto Moreno. Moreno in that data control car as they come up to the fastest section of the course. And we got a glimpse, too, of Greg Moore. There he is, in fact, closing on this. So we're obviously in the middle of a pit stop window, some a little bit early. The others really expect it in about five more laps. So some considerable time on this long course before we see the rest of the field coming in. That is assuming that they run exactly on the game plan. Zanardi has led right from the green flag. On board now with Michael Andretti at the Miller 200 from Mid Ohio. He just went into the pit. So did Scott Pruitt. So two Fort Cosworth cars have pitted a little ahead of what you anticipated. And we still have not seen, though. They look like they're on their game plan. The Honda cars, most notably Zanardi and Vassar, are probably doing in a lap or two. What I'm also seeing here, Paul, is I think people are getting more tire wear than we, we thought. And I know I talked with some of the uh, Penske crew, particularly uh, Richard Buck, right before the stop. They're worried about how long these tires are going to last. Right in the middle now of some of the stops, Jack Aroot. The reason for Alex Zanardi coming in as early as he is, he was planned to come in on lap 29. He was bottled up in traffic, guys. The crew talked to him, said, rather than battle with the traffic, let's just come in here, make the tire change now. The crew goes to work. Now, remember, this crew has been changed just a little bit. The rear tire changer, well, he's making the change. No problem. Just waiting on the fuel. They're talking to Zanardi right now, saying, take it easy. And there's the word. 14.1 seconds, he's off and away. So as, as uh, Zanardi joins back onto the race course, Vassar, of course, did stay out, and that will not give him the official record lead for a lap because as Zanardi came into the pits, he actually crossed the finish line ahead of Jimmy Vassar. But Jimmy Vassar is the physical leader on the track right now, but he's due in at the end of this lap. That's right. He'll, it'll take him for a second for all this to kind of Get scrambled out and find out we'll have to wait for a few minutes just to see who got the better stops and how it played out on the track. So Jimmy Vassar do in. And the stops here are of course the time. No, he's due in, but a, not coming in. He's gonna lead a lap. He now crosses the finish line. He's the official leader at that point. So he got a lap under his, his belt. Now, if this was NASCAR, of course, he'd get five points for that. And we mentioned that Joe DeFerrin looked like he was giving it a very hard ride. Apparently, he did get together on the circuit 
with Harrow, and there is some right side damage being reported now to DeFerrin's car. We have not seen him head for the pits. In fact, he just flashed down the pit straight. There he is. We'll look for that. Nothing obvious uh, at first glance on the right side of the car. But uh, Hero does come into the pit. So does Raul Boyce. I'll tell you what, DeFerrin is driving this thing for all it's worth. And they are waiting, too, for Brian Herta, who is currently second. So if Vassar and Herta come in together, we're going to see a race between those two crews. Plus, where is Zanardi going to be as they join over in the first turn? This is going to be good. Going back on board, Jimmy Vassar now. Here's where he'd come in. Here's where he'd come in. Yes, he's coming into the pits. So Jimmy Vassar makes his turn for the pits, and Jack Aroot's there. Already, Tom Anderson is telling Jimmy Vassar to be nice and easy. Watch for the traffic coming in. He hits his marks. Now, he's already radioed in that he did, does not want any changes, just a full tank of fuel. They radio over to him to make sure he resets the fuel button. Jimmy Vassar, now knowing that he's got a drag race on his hands, trying to beat out. Let's go to Gary Gerald. Brian Herta in for his first service. They're going to stay with the option tire. Michael Andretti on his stop moments ago changed to the primary. Allen Sir Jr. put primaries on the front, state option on the back. Herta. 13.8 seconds. Bobby Rahal also in behind him getting his service. A problem on the right rear wheel. Now they get it in shape and Rahal starts to move. Well, for Herta, you couldn't ask for a much better stop. That was good work by the crew. You may have noticed from the aerial that Zanardi did come across the line and well ahead of Vassar when Vassar came out. So Zanardi reassumes the lead. And then Vassar chased out and then hurt him. So the order should not change when they come around to be scored at the start finish line again. We'll have to see as well whether that early stop by Allen's Jr. actually puts him in front of Bobby Ray Hall on the track. And continuing to track to Farron. Uh, if he has a problem, his crew certainly has not yet reacted to it. And he's gone down the front straight, uh, the pit straight actually here one more time. So he's apparently comfortable with that car. Bobby Ray Hall, 11. Robbie yeah. Gordon just behind him. Bobby, of course, stopped after Robbie, so Robbie's got a little lighter fuel load and a little more heat in his tires. He's going to try to get back by him as quick as possible, but uh, I think Bobby's going to be pretty tough. I think he was the fastest guy down the back straightaway during practice. And Raul Boisel, there he is. One of the uh, rumors for the end of this season, where is he going to go? Team Green, uh, is probably going to change drivers and Raul Boisel with quite a bit of money in his pocket. We understand he can take his sponsor Brahma Beer with him and when he does uh, he'll be able to find hopefully a good ride. Still seeking his first IndyCar victory. And following up too on the Emerson Fittipaldi story. You know he's watching down in Miami and uh, we're going to place a telephone call to him very shortly here. Find out what at least he thinks today if not what he really thinks about uh, about his future. I'm going to look forward to talking to him because uh, his line's been so busy since his accident. I haven't been able to actually get through to him. Just leave messages. So uh, Emerson if you're listening uh, we're looking forward to talking to you. Hope you're well. Oh, he didn't give you the private number. huh? Hey, we have the private number. Christian Fittipaldi and Little Al and this is a battle for for the uh, seventh position between those two cars and it's the best fight on the course right now. According to the scoring right now it looks like that Al Unser Jr.'s early stop actually helped him a couple of spots. It looks like he moved up in front of Fernandez and Bobby Rahal. Zanardi is still the leader followed by Vassar. Michael Andretti, Scott Pruitt, Brian Herta, and that's the order. 
Riding now with Christian Fittipaldi, currently sixth, and on the telephone from Miami with us is Emerson Fittipaldi watching Christian. Uh, Emerson, this has got to be tough for you. Well, Paul, it's very tough to be here. I would like to be racing there, and uh, I'm very, very happy to be watching the race anyway and being recovering physically from the from the uh, from the, all the damage I had in, in Michigan. Um, I would like to thank all the, the racing fans and the friends that give a lot of motivation for recovery. Well, Emerson, in that accident, which was uh, very frightening, what exactly happened to you, and how are you now? Well, um, I had uh, I had the, the the worst was the seventh vertebra that broke down, and I was I had this uh, surgery by Terry Trummer, Dr. Terry Trummer, and Dr. Green, who is head of the Miami project. And uh, I was very lucky that I have all my movements. I, I full recover my my senses, and um, I'm sure it's going to be just a question of time. And if physically I'll be apt to drive again, I would like to drive again, but it's still too soon to make any decision, Paul. Okay, there's another addition then, Emerson. It, it seems like in a week it's gone from uh, uh, Emo saying that uh, he's probably not going to drive again, and, and now are you telling us you are and soon or what are you saying <laughs> I, I think the I saw Danny comment in the beginning and Danny was exactly right I uh, went if you just have to have a crash you say I'm not going to drive and then you start recovering you feel better you feel you can physically be ready again to race and uh, you, you wish to race again uh, but at this time I think I'm very emotionally involved uh, there's been a lot of mental stress a lot of physical stress I need another four or five weeks to make up my mind. Hey, Emerson, this is Danny. Danny, hi, Danny. How are you? Uh, we really miss you, and, and I, you know, I went out of my, uh, had my crash at Michigan at the same time last year, and I know how you feel. Thank you, uh, Danny. Just, uh, you know, watch these races and take your time. You've got uh, plenty of time to make that decision. I know it's going to be a tough one for you. I know that you called the other day. I was, uh, I was asleep when you called, Danny, and you're right. I mean, I need time to recover. Um, and there's a lot of mental stress, and uh, I think you know, being with the family here, the kids, my wife Teresa, is great, but um, I miss the racing track. Well, I know what you feel, and uh, Jack Arruda, I'm sure, would offer one of his legends cars for us, and we'll have a, uh, a match race between all of us guys that are all banged up. Okay. <laughs> And while we're watching Christian here, by the way, Emerson, nothing's changed on the course, so we've been following Christian here. How's he doing? I think Christian is doing a fantastic job. He's his second season. He's much more mature, and he knows all the track now, and he's, uh, he's charging. He's a, a tough driver. I mean, he just is not to win in Detroit, and I think any time now he can win a race. Emerson, one last question from me, and then we'll let you go. Uh, what do you think of Al's chances to win the championship? You know, Dan, you know that Al is always run very strong at the end of the race, and he's there. He's already seventh place in this race, and uh, he's going to get points, and he finished every race. I think Al has a good chance of winning the championship. For sure, Jim Vassar potentially is the, the most like can win and be the new champion, but Junior will be there. I mean, the pressure will be there, and... Uh, no, Marlboro team pace could be running very strong in the next few races. Emerson, thank you very much. I look forward to talking to you soon. We thank miss you, you Emo. We hope you get back real quick. Thank you, Paul. Thanks, my friend. Okay. And now, just moments ago, take a look at the leader back there in the back as he comes up behind Moreno and locks the brakes up big time. See, Paul, that's what I'm talking about. You always, always have to watch the traffic around here. It's so tight, and the, the traffic has taken out so many leaders in this race in the past. He's really got to be careful. So this is second place Vassar, who is 5.5 seconds behind the leader, Jack. Well, here's what's going on with Chip Ganassi talking directly to Alex Zanardi, the leader. He's counseling him about passing that traffic, as Danny Sullivan talked about, but they are in a fuel conservation mode. They have tried to cut back on the fuel consumption, hoping that they can run with a little less fuel on the last pit stop. Not because they need to save fuel, but because it'll take less time for the pit stop. But what they've told Zanardi now after having that problem, 
is don't be afraid to go to full fuel if you've got to make a pass in traffic. Guys? Interesting piece of advice. I wonder if he'd go to full fuel or if he'd hit that magic button, Jack, that you discovered what it was for, because if it's for 10 seconds and gives it more fuel and more RPM, that would give him enough just to pass the car down that straightaway. Well, listening to Chip Ganassi talk back and forth, hasn't said a word this week about the button, but he is saying go to position six if you need to. Go to position six. What is position six? That's full fuel mapping. As soon as they make the pass, Chip gets on and says, now back to position four. That's conserving a little bit fuel. You know, there's six different fuel maps on board these Hondas. And of course, what that also means why he's going, if they're watching the telemetry in the pits, they can tell when it went to full, full rich. If they're trying to conserve full fuel, then they'll just turn it back down immediately. And of course, ever since, well, look at him smoke the brakes up ahead there. So now it's still Zanardi leading and Vassar's closing in just a little bit. We'll be back after these messages and a word from our ABC stations. Roberto Moreno has now fallen by the wayside with a gearbox problem, so he is out of the run. We have 40 laps to go here at the Mid-Ohio Sports Car Course. And you ride on with Bobby Rahal. He is ninth place. Just ahead, that is Fernandez. And the two of them have been battling rather constantly for the past uh, five or ten laps. Straight, but uh, I don't know if it's close enough to actually make a move, but he's looking at him. Not quite enough. And still not close enough. He's almost got to be back under that rear wing. You saw him fall out a little bit earlier, PJ Jones, and now he's with Gary. Okay, what was the story on that fire? What uh, caused it? Well, we were in the hot seat a little bit there. Huh? I was just going down the back straight away. We were getting better and better with the car, and uh, started smoking a little bit and uh, I looked in the rearview mirrors and I uh, saw some flames I thought well I better get out of this thing before it catches on fire and uh, stop the safety uh, safety crew did a great job uh, getting the fire out we've talked so many times about this Toyota developmental program you've stepped up it looks like you've had more power the last couple of events even from when you tested here right I mean we gained about uh, two seconds from when we tested here and uh, you know the car is working better the motors a lot better uh, you know, we really need the off-season to get uh, to get our car better and get our motor. The off-season comes, I think, will make great strides. Thanks. Thank you. I think a lot of people expect that. Bobby just making an attempt right there. Uh, he wants to stay as close as he can, but see, Fernandez just pulled out a little bit. Good comparison. Here we go. Now Bobby's Benson gonna Honda. take a look. He's going down the outside. Fernandez is blocking to the inside. Bobby wow. does a great pass right around the in outside. There's where experience on this track really pays off. You wouldn't think that was possible, especially considering after the first of those turns, it's off camber. You can fall right off the racetrack. This one track, though, you can go around the outside there because then you're on the inside for that left-hander up over the hill, the second part of the S's, and it is banked there. And uh, like you said, Bobby's got a lot of experience around there. He's probably done that move a couple times before. Absolutely beautiful move by Bobby Rahal as he makes the pass on Fernandez. That talented junior. He seemed to close on him very fastly. See Al's car moving there a lot, but Bobby seemed to close in on him incredibly quickly right there. And he closes again under braking. I don't know. That kind of looks like Al Jr.'s having a little bit of problem getting into that corner. Bobby's going to go by him, I believe, right here on the straightaway. Al's going to try to hold him off, but he doesn't have quite enough. I'm watching Al. I think he's using a lot of road here. He's being conservative. I don't I see the car wiggling around a lot. I've got a feeling that uh, his tires are going off a little bit here. Yeah, there's got to be something going on there because now here is Fernandez and Ray Hall. 
just got pulled. him so quick and got around him and just pulled away. And uh, Al had been out there comfortably in front of him. I've got a feeling that his tires are going on. So he's probably trying to conserve it as much as he can. Don't forget Al, Al Jr. stopped earlier than most everybody else did by three or four laps. So his tires are probably going away a little bit faster. Tires a little close to the end of their life. Roberto Moreno, we reported him out, Gary Gerald. Yeah, we thought maybe it was a clutch problem. Roberto, I understand that was not the case. What was the problem? Yeah, well, uh, the data control Firestone car was running fine. It was running very strong, it's stronger than in qualifying. We made a very good setup. The tires were lasting fantastic. We just had a good pit stop. Unfortunately, uh, changing gears, there's, it's like something broke on the gear shift, and uh, it got stuck in one gear. You move the linkage backwards and forwards, and nothing happened. So uh, it was the end of the day for us, unfortunately. We'll be back the next race uh, next weekend. I appreciate it. Thank you, Paul. Oh. Mexico's Adrian Fernandez all over the back of Little Al now. Boy, that was some close racing in there. I mean, De Little Al might have some t problems, but uh, he is not not going to give up. Jack, you have something? Yeah, it's exactly what you thought, Danny, and it's exactly what I thought about the early pit stop. He's got three more laps on those tires, and according to Richard Buck, this is his quote, this is the price you got to pay when you gamble on track position. The tires are going away. So Al Unser Jr. now has to fight the race course and his tires. What he has to be careful of, too, though, Paul, when he's that close wheel to wheel, if he takes a chance and touches, don't forget Jimmy Vassar's up in second place right now. Al Jr. has dropped back to eighth spot. He does not want to lose those points. Fight is for eighth. It looks like Fernandez may take it here as he comes inside a little Al under breaking and slides past Robbie Gordon just behind him there. Now will Gordon be able to overhaul little Al. Now look in the upper left hand corner there. If the race were to end now now we know it's not going to end right now but as we continue to track the championship well Vassar by nature of his position and little Al as a result of the struggling he's going through now Vassar would surge ahead in the points. I think that's right now but I still think there's a lot of racing to go. Just something to think about just a little something for the future. Well but the thing is interesting while you're thinking about that so are the teams but so are the drivers. They're actually out there analyzing where they are. They know what position they're in and they know how important those points are. I believe that's also as I mentioned earlier why Jimmy Bassers probably being fairly conservative. Now lining up behind the Al is not only Robbie Gordon but here's the LCI car Andrew Ribeiro. And Raul Boisel apparently a problem not yet off the course finally takes a dart off here comes Ribeiro moving inside of Robbie Gordon and Whoa. they touch they touch as they come through the corner here comes Magnuson looks like he got him too. I don't think that Robbie actually touched. I think he had to hit the brakes so that he didn't hit him. Geez, I, I thought it's all that. We'll listen here. Here it is, Rob. Magnuson hit me. But, but he. Uh, yeah, here it is, Rob. I'm going to come in, push it back down. Push the steering rod back down. I'm going to come in and pit. Take tires, guys. Be ready. See, he that said that Magnuson hit him. Take the steering rod and move fuel. Well, it looks like they're... Down. It doesn't have a big creek. Just push the steering rod back down. Steady, 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 steady. Easy now. You heard Derek Walker and Robbie. Push it down. Push that steering rod down. Okay, go, go, go. They went for the right front. That was where the hit occurred. It looked... He said it was certainly Magnuson. I saw Magnuson get him. I wondered if he didn't have contact earlier. Let's run it. it looks fine. It looks okay. So Derek Walker says it looks okay, Danny, but here it is. All right, Ribeiro comes around him. He's on the outside. He knows he's got that bank corner there. He stays on the outside, stays right there. No, he touched him. Boy, he went way off, but look here. Now there's Magnuson. That's where he touches. I think that he just ran off the track with Ribeiro. Okay, they're on the inside. Very close racing here. 
No, it looked like some contact on it, that It looked right like front. Romero's left rear got his right front. And then and he there, hits him there's again. There's no question that Magnuson got him. I think maybe he got tapped twice, but uh, at least their tires touched on that first one. I don't know if that did the steering call. All right, now look at this, Danny, and tell me, what do you think about the car? Is he fighting it? Well, if Derek's guys looked at that right front and they said it looks okay, then I don't think it was a big bend. On board now, Bobby Rahal. He comes right up alongside Christian. Whoa. Heavy braking, he hangs on to it. Whoa, almost overstepped it there as he came up to battle the sixth place Christian Fittipaldi. But you know what I'm seeing here? Bobby's really picked up the pace. Passed Al Jr., we know has a problem, but he just moved right to the front and caught Christian. And not to totally ignore what's going on at the front, it's no contest right now. Alex Zanardi is almost 10 seconds ahead of Jimmy Vassar. And Michael Andretti is another eight seconds back from that. Back at the Miller 200, Lexington, Ohio, the Middle Ohio Sports Car Course. You're on the nose of Bobby Rahal's car as he battles with sixth place Christian Fittipaldi. We should see pit stops very quickly here by the leaders as 53 laps are complete by the leader of the race, Alex Zanardi. This has been the hottest battle on the circuit. And we've been talking back and forth while we were away about that contact between uh, uh, first the uh, the one car coming up on on uh, Andre Ribeiro when Andre Ribeiro got next to Robbie Gordon and then Jan Magnuson and we looked at it a couple more times as Ray Hall tries to move here he's going to try around the outside uh, but no, no, not no. enough and, and what what I think we've decided is that the smoke you see is from him locking the brake so Danny Sullivan had it dead on the touch came from Magnuson. This is the Honda Helicam looking down on that ongoing battle fit of Paul D. Ray Hall. Paul, we also had some help from our back in the trucks, didn't we, on that one? They kind of played it back, and we had some uh, opinions from uh, Steve Byam. We had the benefit of replay, and everybody replay. got into everybody it. Everybody got an opinion. Whoa! Whoa! No, that was Bobby just going around the outside <laughs> to have a dash into the pits. Oh, boy, did that skip. Oh, boy. Gary, you there? Ray Hall is here, and so are we. And we just watch and listen with the crew. This should be the final service. But they've got to make sure they get the full 40 gallon compliment. I got him in 14 seconds flat. And we'll check tire wear as they come back to the wall. And I don't see anything out of the ordinary here, Paul. He gets tire the, rubber buildup, perhaps. He gets the award for staying out to the last possible foot, I'll tell you that. He was right up behind Christian and then swept into the pits. So Ray Hall makes his service. There's his tires as they come up. They look pretty good. Goodyear, by the way, has a new tire they've been working on, and uh, they feel like uh, they're getting in much better shape in that battle with Firestone. Here's your leader, at Zanardi. Michael Andretti, who is running third place, heads for the pits, as many of the teams now make their stop. Here's Michael. Michael's been pretty quiet all day, but he's just stayed right there. He's moved himself up to third spot. Gary? Engine may have stalled. They're on a hill, may have engaged the clutch. Now it fires. Here he goes, but he lost a couple of extra seconds, Paul. And there is Scott Pruitt, who assumed third place and then came into the pits himself. Leaders have not yet stopped. What a unique view, isn't that great? Here comes Alex Zanardi. He's been the leader all the way here, save one lap, and Jack's waiting for him. And Paul, here is a great story unfolding on pit road for Alex Zanardi. Look to the left rear tire changer. That's Rick Davis. He has a suspected broken foot. He didn't want to make the crew changes, said it's too important. He flips back over to grab the starter. He has been icing his foot down, the left foot. Victory Lane, 15.1. Hey, the Olympics and the gymnasts, they don't have anything on Team Ganassi. And Rick is one of the uh, one of the great veterans from the pits and the and the wars that go on in the pits and IndyCar racing. That shows your perseverance right there. He wants that man out and heading for a championship if he can. Scott Pruitt suddenly off course just after his stop. Drove it off. 
Just see, drove it off the track. See him moving his hand right there. He was moving his hand forward and backward like something was wrong. When those guys bend down, they ask you what your problem is so that they know what to do. He was obviously telling them something. He just left the pits, but I don't know what he has broken. Well, whatever it is, it doesn't seem to have him in peril. That smoke, that, that probably really, that's just heating up under the calling there and not really an issue. Oh, they've gone for... Uh, they're going to put him up on the uh, up on the uh, record, Jack Aroot. Well, here's what's happened to Scott Pruitt when he went out of the pits. All the gears worked, but he said he lost the drive from the gearbox back to the wheels. He's not sure what it is. He says, but all the gears seem to be working properly. As we prepare for Jimmy Vassar to make his appearance on pit road, Vassar currently posted in second, gentlemen. Well, Jimmy Vassar assumed the lead of the race, and as he came across the line. Zanardi was in second, 20.4 seconds behind, still coming up to speed. But what that tells us is that we're probably going to find a very close meeting between Zanardi and Vassar when they come out of the pits, when Vassar comes out of the pits in pursuit of Zanardi. Battle for the lead. Remember the, uh, we mentioned Rick Davis, the uh, fellow with a broken foot. Let's go back to, there he is. Did his, did his work for the day. Puts it back in the water. Nice going, guy. As I'm fine. Don't forget, though, in this pit stop, they take about 13 seconds, 14 seconds, but you still have to get into the pits as we see him coming in right now. He's got to slow down. He'll go on the speed control button so he doesn't go too fast. Make that stop, 13, 14 seconds, and then out again. And Jack, here comes Vassar. Jimmy Vassar has come to a stop. It's a nominal stop. They don't anticipate making any change. Whoa. <laughs> the woe was for Fangio, who cut off at the end of that long straight two. And there is a bit of a fire showing at the back of the car. And now we're included with all that sand and gravel that they put down there to help slow the car down. Yeah, there's nothing wrong with your TVs. That's just the, uh, the, sm the smoke from the sand. And he's safe. Uh, there is a fire very definitely burning there. And Juan saying, get over here and put this out. Here's Fangio's coming down the hill. Breaks in there, locks him up. I don't know what that was, why he would lock him up just because of the fire unless something had burned through there, but I don't think that was the case. He probably got a hot seat. He stopped right there where his teammate, P.J. Jones, is just at the next corner. Jack, sorry to interrupt you in the middle of a critical stop. Can you get us back up to speed? Yeah, it was a nominal stop except for one small injury, and there wasn't anybody on the crew. If I can give you a picture of this gun here, the outside tire changer takes this gun and he throws it across the bow of the, of the car. I was standing calling the stop. Guess where it landed? Right on my foot. So yeah. now, like Rick Davis, I'm going to the ice, guys. I was going to say, you better just stick your foot in that ice right there with Rick. You guys can talk and you can give us a report for that next pit stop. And give me that list of guys who want to be pit reporters. Let's go down that one. Jimmy Vassar, you're on board with him now. Came out behind Alex Zanardi, now positioned 11 seconds back from Zanardi in second place, followed by Ribeiro, and then Michael Andretti and Brian Herta, Bobby Rahal. 59 laps complete. Second round of stops done as well. Alex Zanardi is leading the run here. He has been the power of the day. His teammate, Jimmy Vassar, who came in here as the points leader, is 10, almost 11 seconds back in second place, followed by Michael Andretti, Brian Herta, Bobby Rahal, and Christian Fittipaldi. No changes since we've been away. But you know what's interesting? Look right there on your screen, Adrian Fernandez in that red and green car. And right behind him is Greg Moore, who had all that problem at the beginning and dropped all the way to the back. And now he's up to eighth spot. Greg Moore moving up through the field, trying to get those points for the Rookie of the Year award. Gary Gerald, another rookie, Mad Max. Mad Max is out of the race. It was a small fitting on a piece of plumbing that put you out. But Max, tell us about your IndyCar debut. Did you enjoy yourself today? And actually, we were really doing well. You know, the car was really performing very well. And, uh, you know, we had some small problem. Uh, you know, we are on a development program, and uh, we are working for the future. We will be there in the future for sure. I think he's excited about a chance to get back in that seat at the next opportunity. Wish you well. Thanks. Thank you very much, and see you soon. Zanardi, <laughs> Vassar, Andretti, the top three. 
No contest at the front. But here's Fernandez and Christian at it again. And this, of course, is for sixth. And of course, right behind him, as I said, is Greg Moore poised for some points. And he's battling Zanardi, don't forget, for that rookie championship that we mentioned at the top of the show. But the other interesting one is Al Hunter Jr., who's dropped down to 13th. And that sure doesn't help him with Jimmy Vassar in second spot. And that points fight, that's going to take him way back. Today's Miller 200 aerial shots are being provided by the Miller Eagle, a red Cessna 337 Skymaster airplane. And there it is. Here are the guys on board. It's being tested to provide these aerial shots. That shot we just saw right before that. Look, Fernandez got by him at the end of the straightaway. Greg Moore is trying to take advantage of it, too. So Fernandez around Fittipaldi. Here comes Moore. Don't worry. We'll have that on tape. We'll give it to you. And we'll go back. Here was Fernandez working Fittipaldi. Davy Jones ahead. Oh, good move there. He does. And look, he tries to come back, but Fernandez is on the inside. And Moore comes charging right up in there as well. So now on board with Christian. And Fernandez now beginning to move a little bit further forward. Pulling away. Greg Moore wants to have some of that too. He doesn't want Fernandez to get away. He wants to move up that spot as well. Fernandez kicked the back end out as he came around the keyhole. Now Moore working hard on Fittipaldi. He's going to take a look, but look, Fittipaldi goes to the inside like he did with Rail, but Moore's going to go right around the outside. What a great move. So Moore makes his move on Christian Fittipaldi and Magnuson. Replacing Paul Tracy at the wheel for this race was up to 11. And is in trouble. Here's what happened, Danny. Coming up to the keyhole. He goes in there with, oh, with Mark Dundell. Looked like he passed him, and Mark came back on the inside. But he's in a dangerous spot, so I think we're going to have a full course yellow. Exactly what we have. Cross checkered flags at the finish line. And that will slow the field, bunch everybody up, put Vassar right behind Zanardi on the race course. Coming up after this, just three to go, all on road courses. The coverage will be on ESPN. And there they are next week and then in Vancouver and finally at Laguna Seca in Monterey. Well, the crossed yellow flags at the finish line tell everybody to slow down, get in race order because they have a full course caution. They'll come back with everybody lined up just as they are in position. You watch Jan Magnus and Jack Aroot. Leon Magnuson's biggest problem, guys, was he had never learned how to bump start a car. So what they basically had to do is Chuck actually radioed out to him and told him exactly how to get it done. They brought him in, checked the suspension, everything was fine. But this caution flag was a big break for current point leader Jimmy Vassar. Vassar's team was very concerned about his fuel consumption. In fact, they had really tried to get the fuel mix down, running it as lean as possible to save fuel. With this full course yellow, they've been allowed now to go back up when they go to green to go to position six, Gary Gerald. Well, Jack, it's interesting. The crews get on the radios and they talk to their drivers and they get them in a new mindset because everybody's getting used to this new rule, the way they line up, because it puts all the leaders together. No lap cars to contend with. The crew telling Brian Herta, in fact, get in behind Michael Andretti and Bobby Ray Hall is right behind you and they're telling him Ray Hall is fast. Remember, you're racing Michael and you're racing Ray Hall. So that instructions are being passed along here as everybody gets set for this wild dash to the checkered. Now there is Stefan Johansson and he invited all of our television crew to his new go-kart track in Indianapolis where I went head to head in open wheel racing with my colleague Gary Gerald. Usual, the uh, scoring monitor isn't exactly correct. I don't know why they had me so far down in the order. Well, Paul, I think it actually had uh -oh. something to do with the fact that you were 
slower than everybody else. The lights are flashing. Gary's on the line. Yes, Gary. Uh, Paul, I don't know. I can get to see the video, so I don't know what kind of tales you have distorted here. But uh, I think maybe uh, we ought to do that again. That was a lot of fun. <laughs> it's indoors, and it's really great. It's uh, Stefan Johansson's idea. He's there almost every night, and a lot of racers, many of them, Zanardi, DeFerrin, and they all live in the Indianapolis area, and they go by. Rubber in the keyhole. That's a shot up there. See, that's concrete. There's asphalt on the inside. Then it goes to concrete. Look at the rubber laid down in there. That's got to be uh, fairly grippy. And coming into this championship day, 17 different cars had a shot at the championship, at least mathematically. We're back green for a final sprint now to the end of the run. And Zanardi led them back. Vassar was right there, but Zanardi had the advantage of rhythm back to the green and he's pulling away. Still they're lined up as they come into the keyhole. Zanardi for a rookie has really learned how to do restarts. He has been great on restarts every time he's been in the lead. Zanardi, Vassar, Michael Andretti, Brian Herta, his teammate Bobby Rahal. There's Brian as he works on Michael. Looking for third place. No. Too far on the outside, but he's in good position now. He might be able to get him coming off of here. But look at that. Right behind him is his boss. Well, that explains it. You got your boss watching you, Bobby Rahal. <laughs> You're going to have to go as fast as you can. Not only that, his boss is running very quickly right now. And I don't know if there's team orders here. What do you think of that one? Could you imagine the boss radioed over and told you to move over for himself? I'd move over. I'd move over right away. You know, you might get the ride in the future years. You, just, you have to play it careful. I'm, yeah. But I'm not a championship racing driver. Either. There again, I think I'd have radio problems. <laughs> and you are a championship driver. Zanardi Vassar, they're both across the line. Michael Andretti holds on to his third place, despite the challenge from Brian Herta. Bobby Rahal down working on his teammate, Herta. Fernandez behind Rahal. First three are static. Herta is trying to close in. Here's the rest of the field. Greg Moore tries for a move on Christian Fittipaldi. He did that once before. I don't know if uh, Christian's going to go for it twice, but he's dropped a spot because he was in front of Christian at the restart. Robbie Gordon closed on Ribeiro as they came into the corner. These four are right together. 70 laps are complete. When you're behind, that's the one great thing about having a full course yellow. It gives you a chance because it bunches the field back up and you got a chance to race with those guys again. Danny, there's a lot of talk about the full course yellow and the putting them back in race order. How do you come down on it? Well, I think it's great because I, I think the the disadvantage, the number of times you get disadvantaged at them is a lot slimmer than the times that you actually get an advantage of. And I think that the guys have been working to get their position should hold on to that position. Well, they're all tight now coming off of that full course yellow with Zanardi, the leader, and he hasn't pulled out all that much. He's only 1.1 seconds ahead of Jimmy Vassar. Back at the Miller 210 to go as you take a look back from Ribeiro's car. Blundell trying to close in on Ribeiro has been all over the place in the past lap or so. I don't know what's happened to him. He locked up. He could have gotten off and gotten on to the the marbles and all that pickup and he hadn't had a chance to clean up his tires from that but he's sliding all over the place and has dropped back. No changes at the front. Zanardi, Jimmy Vassar still just over a second separating them. The two teammates Zanardi has been the, the dominant power throughout this run here today starting on the pole and jumping off to a lead and then keeping it through the pit stop. Let's go to Jack Aroot. We've documented Scott Pruitt's problem. He's back in his civvies. But take an assessment of the guys that were in front of you, Scott. Who do you think has really got the muscle today? Well, it's clearly, uh, you know, both the uh, the target cars were really the, clearly the ones that were, were showing, the, uh, showing the way for us. Michael and myself and Herta, we all seem to be about the same speed. It just depends on who was in front. How difficult is this racetrack for someone like you? Physically, it's very demanding. Um, it, you know, but all the, you know these days, the guys are in great shape. You see a lot of those tubes coming out. Instead of taking the water during a pit stop, we take it during during the race. Um, so that's really not going to be a problem. The biggest thing, just like something happened to us, is little things that might happen. You know, for us, it, 
with the drive shaft. They're shot in the Patrick guys did a great job on pit stops. But, uh, but for the most part, everything's got to be clicking. It's got to be good and consistent for the whole race. Remember, this was the guy that first lost his dash, got it back, lost the telemetry. Now he lost the drive. Not a good day for Patrick and the Firestone crew. Difficult day for Scott Pruitt, his fourth DNF of the year. And Jimmy Vassar coming into that area just covered with extra rubber that has been sprayed off the sides of those cars. Very soft compound. Eight laps to go now for the leader and for Jimmy Vassar, first and second. Right there they are. You know, I'm watching Jimmy on here. He's sliding that car around. He's certainly not giving up the fight for this thing. He definitely wants to get up to the front. Leaders have separated out just a bit. Here comes Fernandez, Christian, Robbie Gordon, and there is Greg Moore, Gary Gerald. And Greg Moore continues to have the same kind of a problem that haunted him early. He started seventh. The motor almost totally shut down. Oh, and power. And, and Robbie Gordon back. slides off on that Robbie corner. Robbie Gordon's gotten off at the keyhole. He's stuck in the same place at Magneton. That's going to probably be a, oh. Uh, and also Hero off course. So those marbles we showed you a minute ago, definitely a factor. Gary, we interrupted you. Both these drivers appear to be okay. Can you, as they go to full course yellow again, can you finish up? Well, it's more of that uh, same kind of a gremlin. Tony Brunetti and this crew very, very frustrated because he'd worked his way all the way back up into the top 10 in seven, and now they're encountering the same kind of a problem. Intermittent loss of power. Really frustrating day for Moore and his crew. Five to go, but now they have seen the yellow flags all around the course. Pace car will come out. They'll bunch him up again. And now it very definitely will be a sprint to the finish. Seven laps to go in the Miller 200. What has been an interesting day in the fight for the championship. Back at Mid-Ohio, still under the full course caution. And uh, we were probably a little too quick to jump on Robbie for sliding off into the gravel pit. Not exactly what happened. Here he is on the pit straight. There's through turn one. When he comes out turn one, everything's okay. Doesn't go up into any of the marbles. Accelerating up, checking there. Listen to that. That's either motor or gearbox. Something broke. He and did. this was when he climbed out. And he just drove off and he parked it in a pretty good spot. Frustrating for a guy like Robbie Gordon, but at least he's safely out. They still have to get Harrow's car off the edge of the race course. They already have Robbie Gordon's car off of the course. So now this flag should go green very shortly. When we come back, we'll catch the restart and we'll run right to the checkered flag. Caution flags still fly all around the Mid-Ohio sports car course. They cycle around behind the pace car. Look there, if the race ended now, well, Alex Zanardi would be the big benefactor with his uh, theoretical victory at the moment, moving up into third place. But still, that points, points battle staying very, very tight. Four laps to go as they move down the pit straight, and we'll see a green flag at the end of this lap and it'll be a very short run to the checkered. Well, they're only going to have a real quick dash, as you say, but uh, in that point situation, the guy that uh, Vassar's got to be very pleased and Artie's got to be very pleased. Chip ganassi has got to be very pleased. The disappointed guy's got to be Allen or Jr. who's in there with one point at the moment and he's going to try to probably make the most of it with this restart when they go well, they'll have three laps because everybody will be bunched together. But he's got some pretty tough guys in front of him. Again, under the new rules, the field is in race order. The 12th car back is Al Unser Jr. That position is only worth one point. Look at him poke his nose out there, let everybody know that uh, he's right there. Gary Gerald? Follow up on Robbie Gordon, it was engine related. The engine just expired. That's what pushed him out of the competition. Michael Andretti, who is third in the leader's serial, expressing concern to his crew on the radio, He's worried about the horsepower the Mercedes may have right behind him in Brian Herta and Bobby Rejo. So Michael hoping that he can hang on to that third spot on the spot on the podium. Jack? Gary, what does a car owner say to the driver of the lead car? Quite simply, Chip Ganassi said, Alex, next time by, don't lay down on me. Stay out front. I'll tell you, there's a lot of guys going right now with all this stuff because it's come down to the last three laps. Hey, here is some high-tech race fans. 
They have their generator. They have their television. They have their little DSS dish. <laughs> they're having a great day. They got the best all coverage. How you doing out there? And they're sitting at the first corner so they can watch them up that short shoot out of the keyhole and down the back and then pick them up on television. Portable satellite coverage. Like Who that. would have ever thought? So now it's going to be a sprint. A mere three to go when they come back to the finish line and the green flag already. Tim Swintel, the starter, is anticipating the cars coming off of the carousel through 13 and heading toward him. And this restart could mean so much. Zanardi fires it up. He moves. There comes the green flag. A critical three laps for the entire IndyCar season. Allinger Jr. doesn't make a move as he comes through one, stays in line. Zanardi again gets a great start, but Michael Andretti is up challenging Vassar. See his hands turn there. He had a little back end coming out, had to correct it. But look at this. Brian Hurd is looking for a way around him. Brian Hurd at once Andretti. Vassar sweeps way to the outside. Hurd is alongside Michael. Michael's going to stay right there with him. Battle for third. It looks like they got together there. Boy, they had their wheels interlocked there. That is some close racing. Of course, his boss was sitting there watching the whole show. So Bobby Rahal still lined up behind Brian Herta, then Michael Andretti ahead. The leader is still Zanardi. Vassar's right behind him. Zanardi with another good start, is able to pull the momentum away. As they come around now, two laps to go. Two laps to go. No change in the order. Still keeping an eye on Little Al. Still 12. Now that, that graphic in the upper left-hand corner, it takes a little bit for the computer to process it and update it to two laps to go. It's now done that. Little Al working on Parker Johnstone. Battle for 11th. Battle for a point. Ribeiro working on Greg Moore. Little Al can't contest Johnstone coming off that corner. Johnstone comes a little wide, keeps his momentum going. But look who's all over him is Johansson. If he passes him, Little Al gets no points. With Jan Magnuson right behind him and pushing Johansson. 1.5 seconds of separation first to second at the point. No contest there between first and second place. We watch for the white flag. Here it is. Two and a quarter miles to go. Zanardi. Then Vassar. Then Michael. Then Herta. Bobby Rahal. Fernandez. Christian. Ribeiro. Craig Moore. Lundell. That's the way they come across the line. No changes yet. Who's going to make the move to try and grab that extra point? Doesn't seem like oh, it. Oh, but Moore is, in fact, the one. Moore gets into the barrier. That's going to be very costly in terms of the rookie fight. So Greg Moore jumps out, and that brings everybody behind him. Blundell, John Stone, Unser Jr. forward. So they're all going to pick up better points than they would have. Greg Moore appears to be okay, sure. He takes off the wheel. And two other cars, Parker Johnstone and Magnuson. No, that's no, L. L. Junior. That's L. Junior and Parker Johnstone get together. That's going to be costly. Ribeiro's in trouble. What a final lap this has become. So Sonardi will head for the checkered flag and take the win just ahead of Jimmy Vassar. Alex Zanardi with the win on a very action-packed and somewhat confusing final lap. Nice job, guy. You really helped your guy do it today. Al out of the car. Boy, about four simultaneous occurrences there that all had an effect on the point standing at the end of the run. Let's take a look at what some of those incidents were. Watch Ribeiro here with Moore. Uh, so Moore put him out, spun Ribeiro around. That got him out. Now coming down the back, Al's making his move on Johnstone. 
Parker comes across. They knock the front wing on. Both of them spin off. Boy, that surprised me. That's so unlike Little Al. Well, in a sense, he had to try to get some more points. He had to try to get by. He just picked up, you know, from Mora and Ribeiro. Here was his other opportunity to try to get through there. Well, normally you tend to see him when he comes in on that kind of thing so clean, but desperation makes for desperate acts. <laughs> Going to the winner's circle. A little hopping, a little help from your friends. I don't think he's going to miss that winner's circle. So Alex Zanardi has taken the win here. And there is Jimmy Vassar right there with him as well as they're on the cool down lap. Sixth win of the year for the target Kip Ganassi racing team. Of course, Zanardi's second win. And the final standings, there they are, unofficial, of course, at the moment. With some uh, substantive changes down in the bottom six. And there they are, of course, with with that incident. Uh, it, uh, it put little Al out of the points. Oh, that's too bad. Allinger Jr. really never had a handle on it today, and he came into this event second in the point standing. So he's still there. But take a look. He started just one point back. Now he is well back from Jimmy Vassar, and Alex Zanardi takes a pretty good move forward. Jack? Well, it's pandemonium down here, and you want to know why? It's the first time for a 1-2 finish for Ganassi in racing history. Alex Zanardi, congratulations. A victory that could be so very important in the points chase. Yeah, that's, that's fantastic. I don't know where, I'm, where I am at the moment in the points, but that's great for the team. One and two, I mean, we can't do that better than that. It's, I'm so happy for Target, for all the people, for all the guys, for Brad. It's his birthday today. <laughs> it's a great day down here, Paul Page. So congratulations to Alex Zanardi, who takes the win here today. Jimmy Vassar remains in the points lead. The fight moves on to the final three races of the season, and Chip Ganassi has a one-two finish at the Mid-Ohio Sports Car Course. I'm Paul Page, thanking for joining us here at Mid-Ohio.